It's your Locked On Flyers podcast for Thursday, November 10th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that is here for the drama of John Tortorella returning to Columbus. He's not here for it, but we are. Exactly. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here as always with Russ Cohen, who is on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. You can Follow us on Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. That's where you'll keep up to date on all the Flyers news and our episodes. You can also email the show at LockdownFlyers at Gmail. On today's show, we are going to preview tonight's matchup against Columbus. And uh, I had a little conversation with Jay Foster from Lockdown Columbus Blue Jackets. We talked to him in the preseason, but things are much different now. So it's good to catch up with him. And then we are going to do a prospect profile on Charlie Strammel. Locked on Flyers is free and available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you are listening. So subscribe. You'll get all of our episodes here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Plus, we're over on YouTube. So subscribe there as well. I think the biggest question heading into tonight's game is Carter Hart going to be ready to get back in there. Is he feeling better? He did practice yesterday. Uh, Of course, John Tortorella, ever the cagey guy about it when asked directly, will Carter Hart play? And he's like, I don't know yet. (laughs) At this point, I'm actually starting to be amused by it. It's not. You know, it's it doesn't bother me because you kind of expect that from him. Yeah, I mean, look, when you cover the team, you know you're going to have to fill in, the, fill in the blanks. Like, that's just the way it is. You ask the question, you're not going to get an answer. You fill in the blanks and you move on. So I get, I get the other side of it just being amused. Like, yeah, okay, I get it. Yeah, and because, you know, you, nothing's ever 100%. And so there's always right. a, a good out there if he says it that way. Right. But at the same time, I think, you know, we're starting to really see how he enjoys the dance with the media. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm starting to enjoy it in that way as well, kind of from his perspective, mm-hmm. which is uh, a lot of fun. Uh, I think you know, the only other thing of note from practice was that Proby was out on a maintenance day. So it was kind of hard to tell if there was any switch up on defensive pairings that we will see tonight, but uh, really anything that can happen. So this is something that I had talked about um, because I remember this more with the Rangers because I I didn't get as much info from Columbus. There will be a lot of maintenance days for a lot of players this year. I had said it on an earlier show. I am saying it Mm -hmm. again. Expect this. Yeah, although, you know, they have to anyway in their contract. So uh, we'll see if it seems like there's more of them. But I think this is when it's starting, right? Right, you know, right. Now that we're like a dozen games yep. into this season. And he plays the most minutes and mm-hmm. and he plays tough minutes. And it's not shocking. Not at all. Uh, the other thing from his presser, again, that was more of a dance than anything else with Torts was, you know, the whole conversation of him going back to Columbus where he coached before. And again, you know, of course he's being, I I think very similar to what some other coaches would say, to be honest, you know, he's there to coach the flyers and he's going to focus on that. And that felt kind of rote, but I think people were trying to dig into it a little bit more and compare the two situations of, you know, Columbus being a weaker team that he got a lot out of and, of course, famously won that playoff series against Tampa. And so, you know, I think there's a a strong desire to compare the two situations. But, you know, there are some differences there, but I can see why people are asking. I mean, is it going to kill the guy to give a quote like, hey, I like my time there? It, you know, we really he had did that. did say that. He okay. Did. All right. He's I mean, like, I just... have a lot of friends there. It's a great city, but you know, this is a different circumstance. Okay. Well, that's fine. I, I get not pe- comparing. That's 
that's fair actually so I, i'm not going to kill him on that that's that's totally i again i went back and looked at it too and i feel like the flyers probably even with injuries have a a smidge more talent especially in net than towards did to start there so that's a big reason why i probably wouldn't compare yeah I, I think that's absolutely fair you know as far as expectations for this game against columbus i think that you know, again you know as i talk to jay about and as you'll see or here, the roles are definitely reversed a, a little bit in terms of expectations overall for the season so far. Uh, Columbus is on a five-game losing streak, so in a similar boat to what St. Louis was in, and there's going to be some sort of motivation around that. They're coming back home uh, because they were in the Global Series where they lost both games in Finland to the Colorado Avalanche. They're on a four-day break because of the required travel around that. And so, you know, uh, is Columbus going to be raring to go? I mean, they'll be raring to go. I think Johnny Goudreau will um, want to, you know, show Flyer the Flyers and fans what they're missing. I, I think if I'm the coach, I'm like, listen, I don't want to hear that cannon. Like that's what I would say. <laughs> the less the less I hear that cannon, the better. <laughs> that is a very good point. Uh, it's a little bit uh, stressful when you hear it in person. I it is say. bizarre. Like I was there for the All Star game, and like you almost got crazy from it because of an All Star game. It was like boom, 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 boom with oh, all right. these goals because it's just an inordinate amount of goals, right? So it was getting a little ridiculous. So that's that's my memory of the, of the cannon in Columbus. But no, listen, this is a down team. You know, you got to step on the throat and show you could win this game. Uh, Columbus has every reason to play their best game this year. They have trouble in net. Uh, Ms. Lickens has not been great. Tarasov, okay, but not great. So this is a game where you know you're going, you're riding, you're riding high at the moment. See if your guys can continue to do that. Yeah, I think one of the most stark statistics about Columbus right now is that this early in the season, they have a negative 25 goal differential. So they are not just losing, they are losing spectacularly. They've lost like seven to one, they've lost five to one. They, like it, it's, they're getting a lot of goals scored against them. And I think that if we're going to try and carry through, some of the progress that we were so happy about against St. Louis against a team that while is very different, you know, from roster construction wise, but in a similar situation, I think that you got to have a lot more of those really solid passing plays, move the puck around quickly and get those shots in because with weaker goaltending and a team that lets up a lot of goals defensively overall, that's what you have to take advantage of. Yeah, take advantage of that. You got to worry about their speed, Goudreau, Hughes. There's some there's some really fast guys there, and uh, Wierenski's always a, a tough guy to, to deal with. So you, you have to deal with that, but I'm sure they know they're a better team than what their record is as far as Columbus. I'm sure the Flyers respect that. Yeah, I think so too. And as far as Johnny Goudreau, I – it's a it's a different situation, obviously, but I feel like he's going to be extra motivated to score against yeah, the Flyers, too. given everything that went down. Um, he has been their leading point getter so far this season, and I think what we can hope for is like maybe he gets you know a goal to you know feel good about that, but the Flyers still win. It's kind of similar to the Claude Giroux situation where you want him to be successful and score a goal but then have the flyers still win yeah yeah I, the interesting thing is you know even if you look at warensky he's a minus every game which is unlike him so clearly the yeah. you know the team defense is askew but like in that global series he played 28 minutes one game like he's he's in the last four games he's averaging like 25 or more minutes so they're, they're playing him to death so that's something you could take advantage of now at home with the home change you know they'll have a little they can keep that a little under control, but, but that just shows, you know, where they're at right now, what the thinking is. 
Exactly. Well, we're going to get the perspective from Jay Foster over at Locked on Columbus Blue Jackets coming up next. But first, we're going to hear about Bet Online. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. Bet Online is is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including the NBA, MMA, boxing, and golf, and, of course, the NHL. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, you can go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available wherever you get your podcasts. So talking to you, Jay, before the season on the Locked On Flyers season preview, we went through all of our divisional rivals and uh, you were pretty optimistic about the season. You were ecstatic about the signing of Johnny Goudreau, you know, as much as we were sad about it. And I'm wondering, you know, what happened here or what is happening here it's still early going I think there's room for a turnaround I I don't want to write off the entire season but Columbus is in the basement of the metro division right now and you know what do you think your biggest problem is god where where do I start with this with the problems that this team has um in fairness um I do think that the team is not as bad as the record states they've had some bad luck um they've had some injury issues um you know they lost patrick line for most like he's played i think three or four games so far this season maybe five um he, we lost him to an elbow injury um the biggest problem i think and as much as it hurts me to say it i think goaltending is a massive issue for this team right now um all three goalies have an, a, a sub 900 save percentage. Um, you know, Corpusalo came in, played, I thought, pretty well for his season debut. Uh, that was his first game since March um, when he had, you know, season ending hip surgery. Tarasov, who was backing up, has been fine for a rookie goalie. Um, honestly, Elvis is the biggest worry right now for me. Mm. Um, he hasn't been playing like Elvis. Granted, the defense in front of him has been very poor. Um, and if you look at kind of his underlying stats, he is allowing a lot of high danger goals, not a lot of low danger uh, goals. His low danger save percentage, I think last time I checked anyway, it was was above average. Um, so, you know, the defense is definitely not helping him out. But when you're allowing, you know, four, five, six, seven goals a game, there are very few teams that have the offense to overcome allowing seven goals a game. You know, like it's maybe Edmonton, maybe Florida, like that's, that's it. And so I think that's, that's what's really killing them at the minute is, is the goaltending. Um, I have very few problems with the offense as a whole. Um, You know, I've been really, you know, we talked about Johnny Gaudreau. I have no issues with Johnny Gaudreau's play so far. Has he scored as many points as people wanted him to? Maybe not, but he's playing the right way. Um. For the most part, I have no issue with the forwards. It is the defense and the goaltending that I think is really killing this team right now. Right. Uh, I'm wondering uh, how you're feeling about David Juracek so far. I love him. Um, he's played, uh, I think he's, he's only gotten into, into a couple of games. Uh, he got called up. The Blue Jackets have had some real tough injury news in terms of their uh, defenseman on the right side. Um, Adam Boquist went out down with a broken foot uh before that nick blankenberg went down with an injury he's been a real bright spot of this season and so you know i was like man it sucks that we could have a right defensive side of boquist blankenberg and yurichek and instead we're just kind of rotating rotating between these three guys but yurichek specifically has really impressed me um i thought he didn't play a ton 
But I thought when he did play, he played with um, composure. I thought he made really smart plays. Um, he's not the strongest skater in the world. And I think that's really evident at an NHL level. But you can see flashes of the defenseman that he's going to be when he's, you know, not 18 years old. And in his first, you know, he's, he's I think he's played three games so far, you know. So is he the, the world-changing defenseman that I think a lot of people thought that he could be for the Blue Jackets? No, but there's a lot of potential there. And it's really exciting to to see him play in in the nhl and he's been really good for the monsters as well um he had i believe at the time of call up i think he had four four points in five games uh with the monsters so you know he's, he's doing the right things and he's he's hopefully going to keep developing but i'm super excited about david Yurchak. yeah i was gonna say i actually got to see two of his games for the monsters because they were playing the phantoms at the time and I was pretty impressed with his play. I think at the AHL level, he really has a handle on things. I think, you know, he does have to make some adjustments, like you said, with his skating. But um, I th- I thought he had two solid games against the Phantoms. I don't know how much that's saying, but yeah. I think <laughs> yeah, he's, he feels very much like a player that's just at the cusp of being too good for the AHL, but is not necessarily NHL ready. So I think after, I'm happy for him to to be in the AHL for the bulk of this season, especially if the Blue Jackets are going to continue to lose games. Um, you know, I'm very much of the opinion that keep him in the AHL, keep uh, Kirill Marchenko in the AHL, um, you know, let them develop that, let them play a million minutes a night, then dragging them up to a, a bad Blue Jackets team to get their confidence wrecked. So one of the things that I think the Flyers have to work on in order to create some dynamic plays like they were able to against St. Louis is win more face-offs. How are the Blue Jackets doing on face-offs this year? Um, The Blue Jackets are doing suspiciously well in face-offs. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I think they're like 17th in the league, which is honestly a victory. Um, The Blue Jackets... (laughs) Big thing the past few seasons has been they cannot win a face-off to save their life. Um, and if we... I think it's gone it's gone a little bit downhill the past couple of games, but um, for the most part, the Blue Jackets have been out face-offing the, the other team, which, again, continues to be a surprise. Uh, Boone Jenner was leading the league in face-off percentage for a little while there, which, again, is unusual uh, because... He, I think, has, has struggled with face-offs at times, um, but he's he's doing really well. And if only they could do something with all of these face-off wins that they're getting, um, I think. Jen is definitely carrying the team, uh, but I think we've seen flashes of um, really strong face-offs from both Stillinger and Sean Corrali, especially. Uh, Rostovic's struggling, but... For the most part, I have very few complaints with the Blue Jackets in terms of face-offs, which, I mean, it's a very small part of the game, but you take the wins where you can get them, especially if you're on a five-game losing streak. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, I think, you know, the Flyers were a little worried just because this will be two desperate teams in a row that we're playing going from St. Louis to playing Columbus in terms of trying to break a losing streak here and at least you know for Columbus they'll be at home but I think what I'm looking at is how the Flyers win this one and to me it's disrupting the transition game because I think that the Flyers sometimes struggle with preventing zone entries and getting out of their own defensive zone sometimes and I think that's where you know other than a Johnny Goudreau you know or a Patrick Laine if he's in the game, you know, there aren't a ton of super fast guys on Columbus right now. And so they should be able to intercept. They should be able to get sticks in there. But what's your take on that in terms of playing defensively against Columbus? I mean, I I do want to, I pulled up the the face-off percentages just before we we move on. Columbus is currently sitting 18th in the league at 50.3%, which again, if they're breaking even in face-offs, I'll take that because they've been just awful for the past couple of seasons. But in terms of defensive play, um, I saw a really good, a really great tweet about their defensive play um, from Aaron Portsline, who talked to a former NHL defender and asked how he thought the Blue Jackets were doing defensively. Um, And he said, infrequently, 
is uh, infrequent is the the best word to describe the Blue Jackets defense right now. Um, so honestly, I think it's not really a case of being defensively solid against the Blue Jackets. Um, the offense is what it is. I think if you can get that line A Gaudreau pairing rolling, I think that's that's really dangerous. But honestly, I think the Flyers could outscore the Blue Jackets with ease, not even on the strength of their offense. I think it's very much a case of the Blue Jackets just can't seem to win a battle in their own zone. So if the Flyers are willing to, you know, throw everything into outscoring the team, Carter Hart is clearly doing fine by himself. Uh, he's, you know, for <laughs> for better or worse, uh, he seems to be holding the net, uh, regardless of how good the defense is in front of him. So I, I do genuinely think, and this is maybe not the most the most helpful answer but honestly i think the flyers could do a lot worse than just decide that they're going to outscore the blue jackets yeah i'm hoping they can continue the momentum from the previous game in terms of really you know showing that they have some skill and can make good passes and and things like that Uh, and columbus could be a good team to do it against yeah (laughs) this feels I don't know, this is a weird game. I don't want to say must win because I hate the concept of must win games, but you just had a really, if you're Columbus, you just flew all the way to Tampere to get your butts handed to you by the Colorado Avalanche back to back. Uh, You're mad, you're frustrated. You've just spent a long and awkward plane ride home. You haven't played in four days. Like this feels like if the Blue Jackets are going to make a statement here, this feels like a game where you're going to find out what the Blue Jackets are. Are they a good team that's been unlucky or are they a team that's just going to fold? Um, and I genuinely, I can't decide which way this game is going to go. Um, normally, I like to make predictions, final score, who's going to open the scoring, things like that. This, I think, is the first game this season where, like, it genuinely wouldn't shock me if the Blue Jackets were, like, if the Blue Jackets won, like, 7-2. And it also wouldn't surprise me if they lost 7-2, you know? Mm-hmm. So... Well, I think it should be a real exciting one. I am looking forward to it. And again, I think it's similar for the Flyers. Is this team actually making progress or not? And there's some big questions to be answered in this game. So I'm I'm very much looking forward to it. All right. Once again, thanks to Jay for popping on the show to talk about Columbus. Up next, we're going to do a draft prospect preview on Charlie Strammel. Russ, like we said, it's never too early to get a jump on next year's draft class. And you brought up Charlie Strammel, who is a power forward, a good Minnesota boy. Yep. Uh, but plays for University of Wisconsin, but he's from Minnesota. So <laughs> let's make that clear. Uh, but he's he's a pretty big guy, 6'3", 215, you know, at this young age. Yeah, he's he's always been big. Um, I did write a feature on him on, on EP Ringside. It's unlocked so people could check it out. They don't have to pay for the service. Uh, he He's always been big, but he knows how to play big. So it's not like he is a guy that um, – is in a league where he's like, oh, well, you know, nobody else is big here. I could take advantage of that. He's he's been big for a long time, so he he's really had a, a, a probably a longer chance than most to finish to figure out how to to take advantage of that game down low on defense. You know, he talks about jumping guys on defense because of his size, and he could you know get them off their game a little bit because you know at any level this size is good, and he already has good strength. So that's that's a it's a big advantage for him. He is a true freshman at Wisconsin, so he kind of knows that there's right. a battle there because he's going to play against older players. There'll be some, you know, 23, 20, even sometimes 24 year olds. And so that's something that he's welcoming that like he's done that his whole life is moving up in uh, in age group. Yeah, one thing I'm curious about with him is that he takes a lot of penalty minutes mm-hmm. and is that something that's going to be really integral to his game in terms of playing a little over the edge with his physicality, or is it something he's trying to clean up? No, I think it's, I think it's uh, the new league. I mean, I've seen him play in international play and, and other things and 
really didn't see that as an issue. Uh, I know some scouts would like to see him be more consistent, but I don't think it has to do with that part of his game. I think it's him learning the way in, in college hockey, like what's penalty, what isn't, you know, cause they're, they're pretty strict as you know. So I think, I think it's more right. a function of that. All right. Well, 10 games into the season with Wisconsin, he's got one goal and one assist. You know, I think that's probably partially reflective of his ice time as a true freshman. Oh, yeah. Uh, and and Wisconsin is obviously one of the top programs. So they got a lot of guys who uh, eat up a lot more of the ice time right now. But I think it's a good learning experience for him where he can, you know, be mentored by some of these older guys as well and learn the game and uh, do you see him as a guy who's going to stick around in college for a while, or is he going to jump ship, you know, a year after the draft? No, I think I think he'll be there two, three years. I, I feel like he's going to be there a while. He really loves it there. Uh, really, you know, sought them out. Thought that they have a great setup there. It's it's interesting because you know it's not like Adam Fantilli, like right? How many guys really go in as a true freshman and just light it up like that? You don't expect that. So what he's doing, like you said is more incremental than what you would expect. So I, I'm not expecting huge numbers from him this year, but scouts know about him. He's played up in age with the NTDP. We all saw him in the All-American Prospects game. So he, he's been around a little while, and I even wrote about him on sportsology.com three years ago as a younger guy. So that's when I first noticed him. And so, you know, again, he's he's good at learning. He has worked on his shot. Because uh, he has a good wrist shot, but it's not as accurate as he'd like it. And I think once that starts to to hit in college, I think he can get a few more goals that way. Right now, it's, you know, college, it's hard to score around the crease. You know, he's got the size, but there's a lot of pileups there. Right. One of the other things I'm curious about is, you know, he's currently ranked in the 11 to 20 range. Obviously, it's a wider range this early prior to the draft. And I wonder what kind of opportunities he will have as a true freshman relative to his rankings, right? Like, is he going to be able to make enough of an impression that would move him up or be at the higher end of that range? Or do you think people really do take that into consideration and can project? No, they take that into consideration. Uh, they do. I mean, the world juniors can certainly be a proving ground if he's on that team. So that's, that's something where that could really offset that. Like if he doesn't have great college numbers, but plays for the world junior team and that does right. great there, that could really elevate him. Cause there are many scouts that tell me, uh, you know, how do you say it? Like as a teacher, the world juniors is like, you know, 70% of your grade sometimes, you know, <laughs> remember when teachers used to say that? Yep. And then you'd perk up yep. you'd be like, all right, I got to really pay attention to, to whatever they're talking about now, instead of before when I was sort of like chatting with the person next to me. So I think that could be a big uh, boost for him, but overall they've had a scouts have had a good look at him being in the program. So they know, look, he's a bigger guy. He's a power forward. Uh, he's already strong, but you know that he could probably get a little stronger. So he's everything every team wants. So there's very little he can do to drop out of that, you know, 10 to 15 spot. Excellent. Yeah, looking forward to seeing if he is on that World Juniors squad. He did spend a lot of time on the U17 and U18 yep. team. So hopefully they carry him over to the U20 level and we got to see him and, and learn more about him. We'll definitely check back on charlie later in the season and as we approach next year's draft uh, our flyers fun thing today is charlie's first ncaa goal and uh it, it's a good one so you can uh, check out a link to that video in the show notes and i'm a sucker for first goals for any yeah. you know, always 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 uh first nhl goals first college goals yeah. um I have my first goal puck oh, sitting look at on the you. mantle, so it's important no matter what level you play at. I never scored in a media game, and and I got stoned on the um, shootout by AJ Perez, um, who nobody should follow on Twitter because he he stoned me on the uh, 
in the shootout. <laughs> All right. That'll do it for today's show. We'll be back again tomorrow with a recap of the game against Columbus. Plus, we're going to look ahead to the weekend matchups uh, with Ottawa, Claude Giroux coming home, and the Dallas Stars. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. You can send us your mailbag questions. You can email us at lockdownflyers at gmail. You can tweet us at lockdownflyers. I am Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R M I R I A M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S P O R T S O L O G Y. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. It's the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and their take of the day. It's available wherever you get your podcasts. Have a great day, everyone.